Hello YouTube land, this is Brent Son coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. A while back we had a guest, his name was Jay, and uh, this was a video that I, ha I had called uh, The Bad Side of Sasquatch because there was a few different stories that had some just really hair-raising, uh, creepy kind of stories and uh, uh, Jay's story was uh, just a wild one that you're going to hear from his mouth here in just a little bit. And um, and I think there was some stories of uh, dogs that didn't come out so well. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, it was a really good video. It done really well. And i um, been looking forward to speaking with Jay. And he is here tonight, so anyway, I'm going to let Jay introduce himself, and, uh, and some of you are going to remember who he is. Um, hello, Jay. How you doing, bud? I'm good. How are you? Doing great, man. Uh, I know whenever I first talked to you, man, I was just so super excited about uh, about your story because it was just so incredible. It, uh, it was one of the better stories I'd ever heard. Uh, up until that point, you know, and, and, um, and, you know, it, just nothing kind of shocks you after a while. And then when you get those kind of stories that shock you, it's just, you know, <laughs> something is like, dude, I got to hear more, want to hear more and more. And, uh, anyway, um, your story of Vancouver Island and then the camping trip and stuff and uh, uh, that, that kind of stuff was just incredible. So, Anyway, I would like for you to give an introduction to yourself, tell what you want to about yourself, where you're from, and what have you, and then we'll get into uh, the Vancouver Island story and then move on to your camping trip. Is that cool? Okay. Yeah. All right. My name is Jay, and I'll be 46 in December. I have always worked around animals, used to work at a zoo, and you know, always gone out stomping around, hiking in the woods, camping, fishing, gone on several hunting trips in my lifetime. Um, I had moved to Everett, Washington and from Tulsa and right. through some networking, through, you know, some message boards and chat boards and that chat rooms on the internet had managed to make some contacts and had been invited to a party. Right. So I get directions on how to get to the island and to get out to Vashon Island. You keep saying Vancouver. It was Vashon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, right. There's about 600 miles of ocean separating those two islands, but that's oh, okay. Uh, uh, they both, they both begin with a V. So no biggie. Um, you have to take a ferry to get to the island. There is no bridge to drive over uh, that kind of thing. I get there. There's probably, 80 people there. I don't know anybody except the lady that's hosting this thing. And, you know, it's late October, about this time of the year, actually. Um, and, you know, I thought I was going there for a Wiccan type of ritual, and it turned out to be more Native American than anything else, which I thought was very, very cool because, you know, that was Pacific Northwest tribes, and I'm, a, I'm from a southeastern woodland tribe. So it was cool to see how the other half lives kind of thing. Right, right. And, uh, you know, after the ceremony was over, you know, everybody's dancing, playing music, and dancing around the fire and singing songs and just having a good time. Mm -hmm. And then from out of nowhere, the entire party went silent because we hear something. Like I said, I've worked in a zoo. I know a lot of, you know, native wildlife and exotic wildlife calls. This was no animal I'd ever heard before. Then we hear it again, but it's coming from a different direction. Then we hear it again, coming from yet another direction. It's like they were coming from three different directions towards us. And they keep calling to each other and getting closer and closer and closer to us. Wow. So finally, the lady that was hosting the party decides that we should move inside at the suggestion of her son. And we go inside, you know, and everybody's down in the basement. And then it sounds like all hell breaking loose out in the backyard. Next morning, well, while all the commotion is going on outside, 
Shirley, the lady that was hosting the party, I hear her telling her husband, this is the last thing she needs tonight. And I'm like, you know, that raised, that kind of raised a red flag. So I asked her, I said, what's going on? And all she told me was they have been giving us a lot of trouble lately, but she wouldn't say what they are. Right. So the next morning, you know, I'm waking up, I go outside on the back porch to have a morning cigarette and I'm drinking my coffee and the backyard is just destroyed. Eight foot tall, eight foot wide planks of privacy fence look like toothpicks. Iron patio furniture up a tree. A bicycle bent in half like a horseshoe shape, 20 feet up a tree. The smell was still lingering. Whatever it was, there was no sign of footprints, no sign of any hair of any kind. But come to find out years later, when the last time I spoke to her, uh, what was going on was there was a new housing development going in not far from her, and there was logging crews doing clear cut. And so they were clear cutting these forests, and Vashon Island is heavily forested. It's not that big of an island, but it's lots of forests. And whatever it was, was not happy that its home was being disturbed. Right. And so, so at the, yeah, at the I, time, at the time, you didn't really know what it was, did you? I had no clue. Right. And and what one of the things that really like intrigued me is that that you said that you kind of came up the stairs because she moved the party inside. And it, when you heard her saying, this is the last thing I need. Um, well, yeah. she, you know, it's like, dang, what, 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 what does that mean? You know, <laughs> cause it, it's like, yeah. what do you mean? What's the last thing you need? What, what's going on? You know, kind of thing. And, and you were kind of doing a little bit of investigating to trying to figure out what was going on because yeah. now when you heard these, uh, these sounds coming they were were they the typical like um siren calls or the roar calls or what what were they um more like a roar and like i said i've you know i've worked around animals all my life i worked at a zoo i know a lot of animal calls this was nothing i had heard before right wow and did, did, did so, it kind of scare everybody that was there or we were all freaked out. I mean, just completely like, what the hell is <laughs> like, going on? Like, what the hell is that? And then, and then you hear another one on the other side and then you hear another yeah. one and it, they're triangulating and coming in. So that, yeah. I mean, that had to have been like very scary. Yeah. You know, we go inside and, you know, Shirley's husband is grabbing guns and handing out guns to every guy there that he had. If he had enough guns for every, all the men that I think I, he offered me one. And I was like, nope, I don't do guns. Right. Like, whatever it is, I, you guys, there's plenty of, uh, of you with firepower. You don't need me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If that ain't enough, then there, that ain't going to work. <laughs> kind <of> yeah. <laughs> right. So when, when the next day when you saw the, uh, the fence, um, did you think, what the heck could shred a fence? Because when you were talking to me about it before, you were talking like this thing had shredded the fence, not just knocked it down, but absolutely oh. shredded it. Yeah, it was toothpicks. I yeah. mean, just nothing but, I mean, there was kindling wood, basically, is all it would have been good for. Right. And, and then the, uh, the, the bike was another thing that kind of really stood out to me is that it bent this bike in half and threw it like way 20 feet up a tree, 20 yeah. feet up a tree. I don't know of any that could have folded a bicycle frame in half like that and thrown it 20 feet up a tree. Okay. It, when I told the story, I think I, I said more than that. So I didn't mean to exaggerate your story, but, um, I, I don't know why I thought more, more, but, uh, yeah, that's still pretty good throwing it up in a tree <clears throat> and, um, but then the, the iron patio furniture, I stuck up a tree too. It's like, whoa, what the hell did that? You know? Right. So in, in some ways, I mean, you were, I guess you all were kind of fortunate. They didn't try to come in the house, huh? Yeah. We did find a couple of broken windows, but you know, 
that was nothing unusual because there was uh, some rowdy teenage kids that lived on the island and loved to pull pranks. And it was around this time of year, so you know Halloween mischief was going on. So right. I didn't think anything of that at first. But right. I was like, whatever did that to the fence, whatever did that to the patio furniture and the bike, that's what broke the window. Yeah, yeah. And you knew it had to be very... Uh very powerful kind of something more than one. Yeah. Well, we knew that there was at least three because we were hearing it calling from three different directions. Right, man, that would be, dude, I've had dreams like that. That would be very terrifying. Um, I guess that where it was a party and you, you probably had a few drinks and stuff like that. I guess that probably helped a little, huh? Yeah, <laughs> you know, knows we all needed it. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you were just sitting there just stone cold sober um, and heard that, you might panic a little bit if you had some, you know, some uh, false courage, you know, uh, some tequila yeah. shots and stuff. <laughs> you know, it would help a little, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Cause, hey, well, believe me, I lived in Texas before, and we would, uh, ha you know, do some drinking, and we wasn't scared of nothing. You know, we go out. Yeah, in, we go out in the field and confront the bull. You know, going to the fishing hole. I was like, "We're going out here, bull." <laughs> you know, he wouldn't do that normally. You know, but wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that you you said they eventually moved. Yeah, they had uh, eventually managed to sell their property, and they lived on probably. Uh, 50, 50 or 60 acres of just their land. And, you know, immediately right there by the house was the only area that was fenced off. The rest of it was just woods. Okay. And, and did they partly move because of this activity? Um, I'm, she wouldn't say that, but I'm, something tells me that, yeah, that's the case. And uh, what, what about the, I, I heard that the bike was still in the tree when they left. Yeah, she told me when I, the last time I'd spoken to her, she said when they did sell the property and moved to Connecticut, where his her husband's family was from, she said when the property was sold, the bike was still up the tree. Okay. And I'm like, and, how did you explain that to the real estate agent? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, I, well, I'm, you might want to hide some of that information for, from the real estate agent uh, because you don't want them to know you got howling, screaming, roaring uh, creatures that can shred fences and bend bikes in half. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, now I was saying this was Vancouver Island. Um, so I was completely mistaken. Um, now, what island is this? In what, okay. And what state is this in? Washington State. Okay. It's still up in the Pacific Northwest. And Vancouver Island is part of Washington State as well. Okay. There's just about 600 miles of ocean separating the two islands. Okay, so it's in the same region. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Kind of thing. Uh, so getting it mistaken was still in the northwest. Yeah. Okay. We were cool. still, I mean, both locations are still up in the Pacific Northwest. Now, now uh, these things being on these islands, that is uh, interesting, don't you think? I mean, because they're islands. And I, I've had more than one report. Uh, I, I did have one story from Vancouver Island, and I interviewed yeah, the guy. I've, Go ahead. I've, uh, I've come across a lot of information where there's a lot of activity on Vancouver Island. Right. Now, I had a scientist guy. He, he, was, a, he was a scientist, and he was a Darwinism kind of guy and, um, and was a strict science kind of fellow until he saw this Bigfoot. And it scared him tremendously. And uh, he was like, oh, my gosh, my professor, never, <laughs> my professor lied to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, because he tried to I talk never about saw it. What, I never saw what did this. I just heard it. And then the next morning, kind of the smell was still lingering around. Right, God yeah. awful smell. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying that the, the guy who um, who was the scientist, uh, he had it. It wasn't. It didn't link to anything that he had studied. He was in uh, uh, the science kind of realm. He was a professor and everything, and it was. Um, he said it changed his worldview. Um, yeah, and he tried to talk about it 
to some of the uh, his colleagues, and they they just really didn't want to hear it, you know. And and uh, so he he was kind of kind of he was a little bit upset. He was like, "Look, man, this this was a real situation that I was in." Um, he ran across a, a Bigfoot on Vancouver Island. Um, it was a really close encounter. And the thing ends up, it kind of takes off after they're standing there face to face for a little while. And he said it when it was running through the woods, it was, he said it was almost like it was swimming through the, uh, the brush. It would like put his yeah. hands out and it would like, like a swimming stroke where the brush would fold out to the sides on each side. It, it was, he said it was almost like it was swimming through it. It was so natural. He said the thing was so fast and graceful. It was incredible. And uh, and it didn't fit any paradigm that he was taught. And uh, because it was too human is what he was saying, uh, partly too. And, but, um, but, but anyway, that I guess I'm digressing a little bit. But I'm just trying to say that up in that area, there's a lot of very interesting encounters, a lot of interesting stories. Sometimes uh, reports of trees, huge trees ripped out of the ground and jammed in upside down with the root system up in the air. And people wonder, yeah. it's like, how in the world did that? I mean, that would take a humongous tractor with a arm of some kind that could do that, you know, uh, logging size equipment kind of stuff. And Out in her front yard that next morning, there was a couple of her, the smaller trees that she had planted. It was just snapped in half. All right. When I saw that, I was like, I can't wait to get off this damn island. Whatever <laughs> it is, is not friendly. <laughs> Let me get off this rock. <laughs> I mean, that, you know, some of what you saw would take a lot more than human strength, don't, do you think? Or, or could it Oh, human? yeah. Oh, yeah. I, what I saw, no one individual human could have done. Right, and it still didn't explain the god awful smell that was still lingering around the house. But the interesting thing is, is, we never found any footprints. We never found any hair. Right. But you know, it was obvious something had been there, right. and was not happy. Right. Well, a lot of times the ground's not real conducive to footprints, and um, you know. Um, if uh, these things are going through the bush all the time, thick stuff, and I, I assume that they're constantly having their their hair that's on them, um, you know, something dragging across it. You know, there's not much loose hair to fall off. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's kind of like if you comb your hair all the time, you're not just going to have hair falling off. Um because they go through thick brush. Well, I bet bet the woods out there was really thick, wasn't it? Yes, very thick. Uh, you at nighttime, you really couldn't see your hand in front of your face if you were out in those woods. Right, right. Uh, unless it was you were in a clearing in a good full moon, you know. And right. <clears throat> Did you all end up having some fun uh, at the party there in the basement? Yes. Yeah. Cool. I mean. Yeah. Awesome. Was, you know, <laughs> it was good that you could sob at your party a little, you know. <laughs> we had we had to try and make the best of what was going on, best of the situation. Right. Did Did anybody yeah. else uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, come off as if they were really extremely freaked out, or did most people try to hold their cool <laughs> as much as possible, or what? You most of the people there acted like they knew what was going on. Really? Wow. Yeah. So, but then again, like I said, most of the people there were from Pacific Northwestern tribes. All right. Well, that makes sense. Huh. Well, I guess I won't keep uh, asking over and over too many questions on that. Um, if, if there's anything else you want to say about that particular incident, you can. No, not that one. Uh, that, that, then, all right. Yeah, go ahead and okay. uh, go to your next encounter. Uh, with okay, the, you fast forward yeah. about 10 years due to financial reasons. I'm back in Tulsa. Okay. Okay. And that's when I, that's when I met the great love of my life and okay. his name was also Jay. All right. And he grew up in, he grew up in Sand Springs, Oklahoma, which is a town just West of Tulsa. And he, I had heard him saying that there is something out in the woods out in Sand Springs. 
the whole time I knew him. Right. Well, so, right. yeah. He was. He, he always said that he wanted to find it, and I'm like, you may not want to once you do. <laughs> <laughs> was you saying that because you of your experience up there? On the no, because I had never told him about my experience up there. I okay. That's just not something I talked about. Um, but you remembered it. So, though. And, yeah. And you had kind of said yeah. maybe you don't want to. Okay, I got you. Yeah. So we decided we're going to go on a weekend camping trip to Keystone Lake. And we're in like the kind of rafts that you would go whitewater rafting in. Yeah. Uh, we paddle out to this when the water levels are low. There's this sandbar that kind of becomes an island. And we paddled out there and it's just him and me and my dog. And we get out there and the tent's all set up and I start gathering wood for a fire. My dog is right by my side. From out of nowhere, Rico just takes off running. Jay's in the tent changing into something to go swimming in. The dog knocks him down. And I'm like, what got into you? I uh, grab the, up the wood, go back to the tent, get the fire going, get, start getting dinner going. Jay starts playing around with my guitar. And we start having things get thrown at us. Now, on our way to the island, there were some guys at a, a flat bottom aluminum boat, about three college students. They're approaching us on, in their boat as we're approaching this sandbar island. And they were telling us, there's something there, stay away. And yeah. they're like, oh, they're just high. Yeah, that, that's like, oh, how they're just that's, high or pulling a prank. That's what I was going to say. It's like, hey, hold on now. You forgot that part because that's kind of crucial for the setting the story up. But, yeah, so you're on your way, and you run across these people in a boat, and they were kind of frantic, weren't they? Saying, go, yeah, and get away they were, from here. They had, been on, they had been on the island. Their idea was to go camping on the island as well. And they had been on there, and they had been chased off. And they're like, you don't want to go there. Right. And Jay's like, oh, they're just, they're on drugs or they're high or <laughs> they're just pulling a college prank or whatever, you know? So I, you know, rather than argue with him, I, I give in. Here we go. We're on this island. Things start getting thrown at us. A, I would guess it might have been six foot long, probably eight inch diameter log got thrown so hard that it just shattered when it hit the ground. Wow. At which point I'm like, we need to go. And he starts gathering up the pieces of the log to throw into the fire. And I'm like, dude, we need to go. There's something here and it's not happy with us. Where did that log come from? <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, I was kind of wondering. It's like, wow, he's brave, man. He was a brave dude. <laughs> because dude, If you have a log thrown at you, you don't use it for firewood. <laughs> You know, yeah. Question: What the hell the deal is? You know, it's like, dude, what happened? What was the deal with this log? He grabs it up and well, starts he, making a fire. Wow, that's he incredible. doesn't want to get off the island, so I start rolling a joint because I needed something to calm my damn nerves. Because he was just, he was determined that we were going to spend the night on the island. Right. And I'm like, dude, you know, all the hair on the back of my neck standing straight up. My dog's all freaked out. Things settled down for a little while. But every so often, the dog would look over in the same direction where I had been originally gathering fire, firewood, and he would let out just a single bark. Well, this little dog did not bark just one time. You get his little bastard going, he don't shut up. Yeah, yeah. And he would let out just a single bark, and looking in that same direction, and I'm like, so there's something over there. And I told him that. Well, that started an argument between him and I. While we're arguing... A rock gets thrown, not a really, really big rock, but big enough that it knocked my guitar out of his hands. And he's holding it by the neck. And I was like, that's it, we're going. <laughs> so we start packing up and loading up the boat. And I get, you know, we get about probably half a football field away from this little sand barge. And we start shining spotlights to see if we can see anything. And boulders the size of bowling balls are being hurled at us. And we don't see anything. We just, you know, all we can see is rocks coming, but we don't see what's causing it. At some point, didn't it roar though at you? Yeah, yeah. When we started shining the light, that's when it roared again. And I was like, dude, we really got to go now. 
And he's like, what? I was like, I've encountered this thing once before and it made that same sound and we got to go and we got to go now. Right. Well, the rest of the trip back to the, to where we put the, the raft in the water was absolute silence. All you heard from either of us was the sound of the water or when the horse were going into the water. Yeah. We get back onto the land and I reach into under the seat of his truck and I pull out. I knew he had a bottle of rum stash. I pulled out that bottle of rum and I just started slamming it. And he's like, what? And I'm like, dude, I need something to stabilize my nerves. You don't understand. <laughs> yeah. and, so, so when you went on the island, uh, at any point, did it make a sound on the while you were on the island? Well, when I was gathering up the firewood, I thought I heard a low growl, but I, you know, I didn't really pay attention. I wouldn't, I didn't give it much thought. Right. But I thought I heard this real low pitched, low volume growl right over by right. where I was gathering up the firewood. Right. And 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 then and, when, when when something was thrown. Um, maybe you kind of saw what happened with the sun, the log being thrown and he didn't quite get that, you know, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, he, maybe he was kind of looking off a little bit and didn't necessarily yeah, understand uh, that that happened. Because, well, he, cause I don't think he, he understood, that, right, go he ahead, understood that the log came hurled from somewhere, but he didn't, he had his back turned. He was, you know, off with a fishing pole in the water trying right. to catch dinner right and when it hit and shattered i'm like i you know i kind of screamed what the hell and he come here he comes running what i was like look that was not there just five minutes ago that's when he's like oh okay so he starts gathering up to throw the pieces of it onto the fire and i'm like we need to go All right it, so so kind of in a way it just didn't register necessarily to him at first did it no, not at all. Okay, because yeah, because I know I, I I'm sure he was a smart guy, uh, and and uh, to typically, I mean, if you were looking at that happen, you would be questioning that so much so that you wouldn't worry about building the fire. So yeah. uh, that's what made me think that there had to have been he he wasn't looking when that happened because you can blow something off that is so bizarre and crazy if you don't see it. You know what I mean? It's like. Yeah. Hey, there's this log here that wasn't there a second ago, and and uh, if you didn't see it get thrown, it's like, hey, cool a log, you know, <laughs> picked the fire. Yeah. Know? I mean, I've I've uh, been in a lot of crazy circumstances. Well, n n I was on an island one time, and uh, that's one of the reasons I really liked your story is that I was on an island one time down at um, Del Hollow Lake in Straddles, Kentucky, and Tennessee border. And, um, well, I thought it was an island, but it en ended up being that the water was up real high, so the water kind of went through a shallow area, and it made it seem like that part was an island. But, mm -hmm. I mean, there was trees being pushed over. And here I'm a person that covers the Bigfoot subject, you know, uh, <laughs> in dog man, stuff like that. So I, I kept blowing off the obvious evidence. is like trees being pushed over, the dog freaking out. And uh, when you were talking about the little dog, Rico, um, barking, he's normally the barking, yappy dog. That's the kind yeah, of dog. Little... Yeah, that's the kind of dog we had with us, dude. And that, that dog usually got on my nerves when my buddy brought it. Uh, me and my buddy Mike, man, uh, he'd bring his yappy little dog. And it was always barking and running around. He was always yelling at the dog, come back, come back here. get You know, and this dog this time, dude, didn't ever bark. He was always shivering right up next to one of us or in the tent. He wouldn't come out of the tent. Uh, and I kept ignoring all the evidence. When I was fishing, stuff kept being thrown into the water. It was never never nothing real big. So I kept thinking there's something must be falling in the water. But the, the trees were 40 to 50 feet away from the bank. That's how far low the... Uh, um, the uh, Water level where the trees are, you know, because there's a big rock like bank that uh, goes down to the water, you know what I'm saying? And it's like 40 feet, so 40 feet away, there's nothing that can fall in the water. But your mind yeah. wants to make a ra rational explanation, even when it's not rational. So I get it, I get it why he picked that log up 
and was making a fire. Because it's not rational that something would throw something at you on this island. Yeah, I mean, as far as we knew, it was just the three of us on that island. Right. And, <clears throat> you know, I was like, we need to go. And, you know, that kind of turned into an argument. And then the argument stopped as soon as it, whatever this thing was knocked, threw a rock in it, knocked my, destroyed my guitar and knocked it right out of his hands. And he was like, okay, yeah, you're right. We got to go. Now, late, I've late, been telling you that for an hour. Right. Later, didn't you find out that there was um, people that had been um, harmed or died in that area? Yeah. Um, there was later on, a couple of years after all this had happened, uh, well, not really quite a couple of years because um, it's only a couple of years now. Uh, I guess it was about three months. It seems like an eternity, though. Um, police authorities found a severed head from a girl who had disappeared four years before. And that was less than 50 feet away from where our fire was. Hmm. And while they were investigating further, they found a severed hand and the DNA, it was not from the same person. It was two separate people. Right. And I was like, wow. Yeah, you know, that's why I put your story in the bad side of Sasquatch. Partly uh, because um, there are stories about when people do get attacked. I mean, there's all kinds of different ones. Uh, but some of the stories, it's these things cannibalized people, and they basically can reach out. Uh, there's there's several logger stories where one comes up and just rips, just snatches the head right off the person, or you know the. Um, I have a story coming up tomorrow that's a, more of a dogman type story, but only the foot of the guy was found, and it was a friend of uh, this guy. Um, he's told the story before. Now the officer has retired, um, so he's coming back to tell more about it. Um, the game warden guy's coming back tonight after I'm done with you, talking with you. He's going to share some more of his stuff, but there's all kinds of stuff like that. So whenever you were telling me about that, it made me wonder. It's like, whoa, man, you all, you all were fortunate. Um, yeah, we were lucky to get off that sand barge yeah. in one piece. Yeah, for real. And, uh, you know, it, at first when the log got, thing got happened, you know, and he's just, oh, cool, firewood. I was like, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> you know, man, it's funny. But, it, but uh, it, you know, it, it, you all ended up getting off of there. Um, um, you had a lot of fans that really were for you that really had a deep um, um, love for you, uh, burden on their heart for you, and what have you, because of the rest of your story. Do you mind, yeah, kind of, um, do you mind sharing some of that? Sure. Um, after that weekend was over, uh, hearing this thing roar, it kind of, I don't know, Jay just kind of started spiraling down. And he started seeing a therapist because he just, his brain couldn't process what had happened. And he, uh, apparently the therapy didn't really help. Um, the therapist had, you know, he had explained to this guy, Mark, his therapist, uh, what had gone on and that I was with him at the time. And yeah. Mark had met me once before, not for that reason, but you know, we'd gone to a, a luncheon where he just happened to be there. And, Mark had asked Jay to bring me with him to one of his sessions to hear my side of things. And that was when I told my first time I told anyone about what happened in Washington. Okay. And I looked at Jay in that therapy session with Mark. I looked at him. I said, and when we heard that roar, it was the same thing that I heard in Washington. I said, now, you know, why I was like, we got to go. Well, I got the phone call. It'll be three years this Christmas morning. I got the phone call where Jay had killed himself. And in his suicide note, he stated that he loved me 
and that I really, really should stay out of the woods and be beware of Sasquatch. Yeah, that was that was incredible, man. Because um, um, I mean, I know why he put the first part in there, but it it's just mind blowing that it was such a tremendous thing to him that he would add that last part. Um, yeah, I mean, it was heartbreaking. A lot of people, dude, felt felt your pain as much as one could, you know. Um, yeah, for you. Uh, you had a lot of fans, man. It was really uh, there uh, praying for you uh, that that were concerned for you and, uh, um, you know, that felt for you. I, so. I have been in therapy with the same therapist, Mark, since the, he died. Uh, started off, I was going to him twice a week. Now I'm down to about once a month. But, yeah, it's been a rough journey. Right. Yeah. Well, you you had a, you've had a lot of uh, people are for you and a lot of people praying for you, pulling for you, and stuff like that. And I'm telling you, for a person who searches out mysteries for a living, there's a mystery when it comes to people being for you and praying for you and sending out good wishes to you, kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Putting their whatever people want to call that. Um, there is a power I think people have in them when they, uh, um, even if you were just what wishing you well from a distance, yeah. there's power in it. I think, I believe people have power and then the, also the power of prayer, uh, you know, according to the scriptures, it talks about the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much and it, no one's righteous. It's, uh, it's a person who's in faith is, is considered to be uh, righteous because their sins are forgiven kind of thing. But, um, but, but people who are in faith like that love to pray for others who uh, they think need it. I mean, it's just yeah. something that they want to do. When I heard your story, man, I do not save your information. I was like, um, I'm not going to let this dude go. I'm not letting him go. You know, and you know that I, I we emailed back and forth for a while. Uh, yeah. And uh, it was like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't care how different you think we are. I'm your friend, and I'm here. And uh, and uh, that that's just the way I feel about it. And um, I think your story is fascinating. Uh, you got some heartbreak in it for sure. And um, I've, but I I've know been invited to go. I know that I've you're going to do well. To the I've been invited to go out to Keystone Lake here recently, and I'm like, uh, no, I'm not going anywhere near that lake. I don't go out into the woods anymore. There's something out there, especially like here local. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I've had, you know, close encounter with it. No, I'm not going back out there. And I don't live that far from that lake right now. And that lake is fed by the Arkansas River, and I am two blocks from the Arkansas River. <laughs> yeah. I'm about five <laughs> miles from the lake. Yeah, it, dude, there's famous movies from down in that area. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, the folk monster and all that. I mean, from that region. Yeah, um, yeah there, there's stuff in the woods, man. It is quite scary, man. Uh, I won't go camping by myself, for sure. Um, no. And I'm kind of a little bit scared to go camping in certain areas because uh, of what I know, you know, and and, and uh, <laughs> this is a fact. There's stuff out in the woods, and it doesn't matter whether someone believes it or not. You know it's true. I'm not afraid of the known wildlife. It's the unknown wildlife. <laughs> and, and and it's not really unknown to you. You know what it is. It's uh, yeah. And and you know you, you I guess you probably think that it's Bigfoot that was out there in that area, and it probably was. But there's other things too that have uh, been very shocking to me that I have discovered that are out there. It's just, it's unbelievable. It's like, oh my gosh, how could this ever be? That yeah. uh, it's kind of like, uh, um, there was a famous philosopher that once said that, uh, he said, some things are so unbelievable that they escape being known. And, uh, and that just so, tr that's true, man. It's just so unbelievably crazy that people don't know it. You can't even tell yeah. them and them know it, you know. 
So, like I said, I'm two blocks from the Arkansas River, and that river feeds into that lake, and that makes me very edgy because I know there's something close. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you, you'll be okay, man. You 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 would just uh, kind of you know watch where you're going and watch you know don't go at night and stuff like that. Um, you've got you you've had some uh, a few changes uh, where you uh, um are kind of doing a career change and all kinds of stuff. So you doing good these days? Yeah, I'm in school to become a paralegal. I've decided I no longer want to work as a veterinary tech. Uh, I've, like I said, I've worked with animals all my life, and I'm not trying to be a dog groomer anymore. I'm tired of getting bitten all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. And so I'm, I've got probably about another year to go before I finish my degree. Awesome. That's awesome, man. And, and you know what, man, I, I would ask that everybody out there listening, I've got all kinds of uh, fans that just, like I said, pulled for you. And I ask that they remember you to uh, remember you in their prayers and their w- well wishing and all whatever they do. And uh, send well, I, send all those to you was, that you have great success and um, that, that you're blessed. Reading, I was reading one of your viewer comments. And uh, I think it was a girl. I don't know. But the, the, whoever it was, the viewer made the statement that it's interesting that I'm in Tulsa and it's interesting that it happened on a, on a local lake. And they said that they bet they know what lake it was. Right. So, so that right there should tell you I'm not the only one that's had something going on around here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And Yeah, because anytime uh, you share something like that, man, there's going to be other people that know something about it. And you're lucky when people comment about it, because there's a lot of people that's watched that I bet you have had an encounter in the area you were that don't say well, something. This is, I mean, other than the emails to you, the initial emails to you, and that first session with Mark and Jay, I had not told anyone anything, because I was didn't want to deal with being ridiculed. Right. You know? Right, yeah. Yeah. Didn't want to deal with people saying, oh, you're on drugs. No, I'm not on drugs. This actually damn well happened. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, it was only after you heard that you you might have smoked one. But, uh, you know what? (laughs) Hey, dude, look, when I was younger, I smoked a few. You know what I'm saying? And I never hallucinated and saw Bigfoot. Um, No. You you know what I mean? (laughs) If I saw something, it was there. I mean, that that to me is silly. You know, you were on drugs. What kind of drugs are you talking about? Because, yeah. look, man, back in my college days, I did a few things. I never, ever saw stuff that wasn't there. I was, a, in my younger days, because like I said, I'm almost 46. In my in my 20s, I was a walking garbage can. We did all <laughs> kinds of things. Yeah. I, 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 do anything I, never I thought saw I was big stuff. enough to handle. I never saw stuff. Did you? No. Right, yeah. Got maybe a little bit wild and crazy and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, um but I never saw things that weren't there. So that, to me, that's, that's, uh, that's condescending kind of stuff. And, and, yeah. and you know, and, and it's, it's degrading, um, because people try to make you feel like you're less of a person that you might've ever done some partying in your life, but most well-adjusted yeah. people that were in college at one time and done this and that throughout a whole lifetime, they did a few experimental parties, believe that. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know, but anyway, man, I, I really like you, brother, and uh, you, you, uh, um, uh, I'm, I just want to say thank you for contacting me uh, a couple times here lately, and letting me know that you were willing to come share your share your story. You always, and then I'm still numbers. alive and functioning. <laughs> yeah, you're still alive and functioning. I knew you was going to be. I knew you was going to uh, um, do well. Uh, well, the initial emails were back in January, so yeah, it's been a while since yeah. you'd heard from me. So. Right? Yeah, and and you know, and, and I'm I'm glad that you stay stayed in touch and let me know what was going on, and uh, and you've got my information, you've got my phone numbers and stuff like that. So um, we'll be talking. Yeah. Talking. After the uh, initial phone call tonight, I uh, I saved you in my phone as far as your phone number. And right. I've got your email saved in my phone number. Hey, in my Jay, phone log, so yeah. Jay, anytime you need to talk, brother, if you have something that is going on that you're excited about, you're welcome to call. If you got something going on that you that's got you down, you're welcome to call. You don't have to call just for 
any particular reason, you can call just if you're bored, if you want. If I'm busy, I'll right, let I, you know. You know. I appreciate that. You're you're welcome, man, and I I I, I really appreciate you uh, coming and sharing your story. And just hold on the line there for a second. And uh, everybody out there in YouTube land, I appreciate you listening. Uh, um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, this uh, story. And uh, it, I, I know that a lot of you remember the bad side of Bigfoot. I'll put it in the cards. Touch the screen. You'll get a little dot that pops up in the right corner. Click that dot and I'll put uh, the bad side of Bigfoot. That and a few other stories are in that particular show. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I, I just absolutely loved this particular uh, uh, case here with Jay. Um, if anyone has anything they would like to share here on the show, you can uh, contact me at BrentonSawn at gmail.com. If you want to contribute to help me with this show, you can go to a link in the description. PayPal me. Super easy to use. Um, Every contribution is very much appreciated. And until the next time, God bless, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.